going approaching a little fast in this corner. Oh. Oh, did he break his arm? No. No, he seems okay. All right, so let's piecemeal this because it happened pretty quickly. So let's look at the hazards just like before. I'm gonna move this video just a little forward right here. So when you're going into the mountainside or this, let's call it twisties, some of the things that you gotta watch out for are these blind corners. And what I call blind corners are corners that where you cannot see the end of the corner. So when you can't see the exit, you don't know what's behind this area. It could be another car. It could be two cars trying to pass each other or it could be a traffic jam in your lane that will force you to stop as soon as you go around this bend right here. Or it's possible that this turn doesn't end here and continues on in an arc, which if you attack the turn a little bit too quickly, then you are gonna run out of space real quick, which is what happened to this person. Another hazard that this rider is facing is speeding. He is going way beyond his capability and that's pretty obvious at the end here. But another thing that you should notice is that he is in the wrong lane position. So when I'm talking about lane position, I'm talking about where the rider has an invisible three lanes where this on the left side is one, the middle is two, and then the most right side is the third lane. So as a rider, you divvy this up in three strips and majority of the time you're going to stay in either one or three. And that really depends on the circumstances or the environment you're riding in. So in this case here, you are turning right. And when you are turning right, what you want to do is before you enter the corner, which the entrance point is around here, you want to be on the outside. So you want to be in lane position one because you want to be able to peek around the corner and see how much you can see around that. If you're in lane position three, like this rider, all your field of vision is at this point, which is pretty useless. All you can see is this rail here and you cannot see what what's behind these tree lines, but that's just for visibility. The other reason why you want to be in lane position one here is because when the bike is starting to make its turn and trying to hit the apex, the natural curvature is going from the outside in hitting the apex and then going back to the outside. But if you already start from the inside here, and let me see if I can make a different color. If you start from the inside like this rider did, what happens is you actually go from the inside and then you go far out if the turn was was wide enough and long enough, then you can eventually make your loop back onto the inner side of the lane. But majority of the time, what you want to do is you want to be able to attack it from outside in and then back out. All right. So the first thing you got to look out for when you are in these twisties are signs like this. Signs are your friend and it will save you. Doesn't mean you have to slow down to a crawl. It just gives you a little bit of forewarning to say, hey, just watch out. It could be a sharp turn or potentially the road might change from pavement to gravel. And that's gonna be a hazard that you'll most likely encounter in your riding career. So let's move forward. So at this point, the scenario that this rider got was probably the best one, which was that the turn was longer than what the rider has anticipated. And I say this is the better scenario than the other because he was going to go wide anyways. And if there was an oncoming traffic to meet him, let's say approaching from here, going this way, you would have collided with him head on and more likely you would probably end up in the hospital with very serious injuries. Same thing if there are cars in your lane that you did not see because they're backed up for some reason. I don't know. Maybe there was a deer crossing or they were just trying to take pictures. Who cares? There could have been a car just parked there waiting to surprise you. And because you're probably going at like 80 to 100 kilometers per hour, there's not going to be time for you to stop. So you will either hit him in the back and you will high side or you would panic and you would swerve off the ledge. Again, not the best scenario. So lucky for him, this was a scenario where it had the least amount of damage, which was a very long corner. Now at this point, this is when the rider most likely realized that the turn isn't stopping the way he has anticipated, which indicates to me that he's probably new on this road or just the new rider in general. And he probably thought, at this point, he would have exited going straight, but because the road all of a sudden turned right, he started panicking. And rather than correcting his turn, as in lean harder to the right, which probably would have saved him, he just let the bike do its thing and then hit the guardrail. So he definitely just panicked. 
at least he's walking and he's wearing all of his gear, which is good to see. Hey guys, hopefully you guys are enjoying my new series for motorcycle crash review videos. If you want to share your opinions or your advice on what you just saw or wish to correct what I have said, please put it into the comments below because this channel is all about sharing knowledge and experience so that every rider that comes to my channel is able to benefit to become a better and safer rider on the road. And as well, it gives you guys a chance to win a $25 gift card from either Revzilla or Fort9 as the channel's monthly giveaway. So be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. With that said, ride safe, ride prepared, ride on.